All right, and welcome back to the True Footy Podcast number 37 this time, previewing the preliminary finals. And Usher, are you amazed that there's only two weeks left of the football season? It's gone by bloody quick, that's for sure. It has. It does actually, yeah. it is a cliche to say, but it does actually feel like, you know, round nine or so it was like a few weeks ago. I can't yeah. believe. You look back and go, oh, that was only a few weeks ago. It was mm. bloody like months ago, <laughs> like that sort of stuff. Yeah, but as well at the same time, I also think back to doing this with you last year, last year's grand final when the Eagles were playing Collingwood. That feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a weird thing, time. It flows weirdly, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Well, we just got real deep on the True Funny podcast. Yep. Um, Busher, how are you? Yeah, pretty comfortable. What did you think of the uh, semi-finals we had on the weekend? I think I picked them both quite successfully. I should no, you did. You did. We're sitting at three out of three. Sorry, three out of six each at the moment. On Please our get degrees, baby. <laughs> I got um, I got zero this week. I thought both of the, yeah. these games were 50-50. Uh, uh, that was to be fair, to I just went the wrong way both times, uh-huh. which is fine. I thought we were treated to two very good finals. Yeah, yeah. When I saw they were good games because uh, it's been. We don't often get really good finals in in recent years, uh-huh. um, but I thought we got two pretty good ones, especially the the latter, uh, which we'll touch on in a moment. But we'll start off with the demise of my own team, Bush Up, which I'm sure you'll revel in. Absolutely. Um, why don't we talk about Geelong versus West Coast? To be honest, the Cats pretty much uh, were the better side all night, other than obviously there was a big flash in the middle where the Eagles came back. I thought the Eagles game, their performance was pretty symptomatic of their whole season. So poor start, came really good in the middle, looked like they were red hot, and then tailed away at the end. And that's pretty much exactly how the season went. Uh Um, Geelong had... They dominated most of the important stats other than hitouts and clearances, so that was where Nat Nui was a big influence. But they had 17 marks to five inside 50, more possessions and more tackles. Um, That's usually an area the Eagles are good at negating the marks inside 50 with Drew intercepting prowess. Well, Tom Barras, a time stinker. He got rated one out of 10 by Fox Footy for his performance. <laughs> and yeah, I thought that was generous. From no. what I'd sort of like, because I'll be honest, I was. Bit back and forth because the Australia World Cup was still alive at this stage of the game. Mm-hmm. So I was sort of bit back and forth. But when I was watching the game, every time I saw Barassi, he was dropping a mark, did mm. something bad, realistically. With about a few weeks left in the season, Barass came out on the Players Podcast and admitted that he felt a bit demotivated or directionless, I think was the word he used, after, his, after the winning the flag last year. Winning uh-huh. the flag as a young guy meant he was, I guess, he was alluding to the fact that he was a little bit lacking motivation for this year and then subsequently he's played the worst four games I've ever seen him play. (laughs) Even Um, this year has been a down year for him, I'd say, compared to last year. Last year he was great, I thought. Yeah, I mean, he he did... I think he only played 14 games this year, so he did have his injury struggles, but he just doesn't look like he wants to be out there Uh to me. But um, but we digress. The Eagles just generally had too many passengers. What do you think... um, And we won't go too much into the Rioli situation because I'll probably do that in a video with Joycey soon, but... um, because we just don't have time for it today. Yeah. But what do you think there was a profound effect on the Eagles going into the game with the obviously the announcement of Rioli's suspension? The timing of it all was suspect. It would have thrown suspect. A, would have thrown a spanner in the works, I feel. Mm. Especially because the test was weeks ago. It's it's weird circumstances all around, really, the whole thing. It is. I can't make heads or tails of it, really. Yeah. I I don't want to put my Tim Four hat on it. I think the timing's unfortunate. I don't think... There's been definitely some uh, assertions that there's part of some sort of... AFL Victorian I wasn't, conspiracy. I wasn't I know, saying yeah. anything like that. Obviously. No, yeah. it is it's a, just a weird timing. Like it is considering the fact that um, again we don't go too deep into it, but it sounds like what Rioli did, he was caught at caught doing in the act. So yeah. why is it three weeks later, on the eve yeah. of the semi final, is he suspended? Anyway, but to answer the question, I guess maybe there was a mental. Effect. I don't want to make excuses for the Eagles. I don't. I don't think I would really give them this excuse. But you could probably argue that the the timing was bad for them. Mm. But I do also think at the same time they had enough to play for after after obviously winning the flag last year and then losing to Hawthorne in round twenty three. I would have hoped that the the fear of them losing their season would have been enough to motivate them for this game. I'd like yeah. to think that that isn't an excuse for them. I think they were motivated. Just they. Didn't have the tools to get the job done on the day. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think Geelong were the better side for the course yeah. of the season and deserved to go through ahead. And frankly, the Eagles didn't do enough throughout the season to 
ensure they got the home yeah. game. If this which, game was played in Perth, they would probably would have been a much better chance. Which is essential for interstate teams, I feel, almost mm. come finals time. I do think, and I've played the Eagles down this year, but I do think they are the, one of the best teams to finish fifth in a long time. So if anyone was going to win it from fifth, I would have given the Eagles a chance. But at the end of the day, their record against the top few wasn't yeah, really good. Wasn't there at all, really. Um, we'll talk more about Geelong because they are playing a game, but just for finishing touch on West Coast, how do you think they will reflect on this season, finishing fifth and missing, uh, losing in week two? I don't think they'd be happy, to be honest, coming off the flag. They would have liked to have set themselves up for another flag tilt with a bit more home field. That's going to haunt them, I think, it's not getting that double chance. Yeah, that's it. There's two ways to look at it because there's 15 wins is a fairly solid premiership defence. In 2017, Adelaide finished top with 15 wins. Yeah. In 2016, the Bulldogs finished seventh and won the flag with 15 wins. So to some extent, they were kind of a victim of what happened around them. I think there was a strong top five this year and they were the weakest of the, that, that top five, Which so they obviously deserve to finish fifth. As a fan, I'm okay with the season as a whole. Um, it could have been a lot worse. We've seen a lot of the worse sort of premiership hangovers from teams and... Um, Going forward, I'm confident the Eagles will be a contender again next They'll year. They'll definitely still be in the thick of things long term. They don't need to shit their dacks and yeah. build, tear the house down. They're yeah. fine and comfortable, that's for sure. I agree. I agree. Especially uh, with a bit of off-season tweaking. Yeah. They should be well, Tim Kelly's a fairly big off-season yeah. tweak should they land him. So that's good. Um, so Brisbane GWS, this was an amazing game. Um, I, I must admit I worked through the first half and I kind of caught the last quarter in a bit, but... Probably the best final since Port Adelaide West Coast, the one that went to extra time and then Shui kicked the goal after the siren. That's probably the best final, not including the grand mm. final, um, because it was a fantastic game. Um, do you think... Oh, I, I've been talking down the Giants in the second half of this year because I've been saying this year is a bit of a, a fail for them because of where their list is at. They should be aiming for top four and beyond. Um, and they were looking like a top two team, probably the second premiership favourite halfway through the season, and their season really petered out. They had some injuries, but they just didn't cope well. And now they're in the final four. Do you think this is a more realistic reflection of where GWS are at, or do you think they're a little bit lucky to skate ahead of Brisbane? I think their talent's definitely there to be there. I felt like, even going into that game, even though Brizzy had the home field advantage, I still tipped GWS because I felt like they had the finals experience, mm. the, a deeper team than Brisbane get the job done yeah that's it i think gws are probably off the top of my head one of the more finals experienced they're the times. only team to win a final every year since 2016 or something i believe yes correct yeah um because i told you that last podcast but yeah also, I, i've heard <laughs> it on the telly as well I'll yeah no that's true as well. yeah yeah i didn't come up with it yeah um yeah but so they'd probably be the the most or the second most experienced behind richmond in terms of finals I yeah. guess, and Brisbane would surely be the least experienced. So I think we saw a little bit of evidence of that. How did you feel for Brisbane when the siren went? A bit bad for them, obviously. Yeah. So like, I was kind of pleased. I don't know why. Mm. I like Brisbane. I have absolutely nothing against them, but I think I was a little bit jealous about their season and uh, how they're the, sort of the new interstate kids on the block. Mind yeah, you, GWS interstate as well. Yeah. But I couldn't help They've it. They've been on the block for a while, though, G-dubbed. Yeah. It is a bit harsh. The Brisbane Lions fans yeah. are going to... I that. felt bad for him, sort of thing, but it's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, they'll, well, they'll be fine. They'll yeah. be fine. I don't. They'll only get better. I don't know. Yeah, so they'll be stoked with this season. I don't yeah. know if we'll see them in the top four again next year, though, because mm. I think they benefited from a good fixture and a sublime injury list. And people are aware of them now as yeah. well, which won't help their clause. Very true, and they still do have a lot of young talent who aren't necessarily going to be able to just improve, like. Mm. So development doesn't happen in a linear fashion like that. So I'm, I've always been a firm believer in when, when a young side does really well, I have always expect them to take a backward step the next year. But um, all in all, you have to give them a pretty much an A-plus for this season. Definitely. Straight set sucks, but it's hard at the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't disgrace themselves at all. So. Yeah, they, held, they should hold their heads up high, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but this game was an absolute arm wrestle. I really enjoyed Nick Haynes and Phil Davis in defence. Um, they've had... Well, Nick Haynes has been a... I had a really, really good year in particular. Did you see the Daniels goal, the winning goal? No, nah, I didn't. Cause oh. I missed most of the last quarter, actually, because right. I was at a friend's place. Yeah, gotcha. Um, that could be one of the most iconic goals in Giants history, I reckon, uh -huh. because he just he burnt them off um, with unbelievable speed. And, it, and Brisbane had all the momentum at the time, uh -huh. and I was convinced that Brisbane were going to win the game. And then Daniels kicked that goal, and, yeah, that was an unreal moment. I wouldn't be surprised... 
if Giants fans consider that their best ever win. Probably would be for them, yeah. Because they, they've know, had other finals wins, obviously, but this one. I think 2016 they beat Sydney in a final from memory. Mm, they beat be. Sydney in a couple finals yeah. now, uh, but I think just for this one they were underdogs in particular. Mm. Yeah, it was a, it was a really really good win. Backs against the wall sort of win. It was a real yeah good win. It'll give them a lot of belief. I feel so mm. when we get to next week. Well, this week now's games. Yeah. Yeah, which we're yeah. about to touch on. We just also should acknowledge Luke Hodge an amazing career. Bloody 346 oh. games, by far probably the best number one pick. Most ever. games ever for a number one pick Correct. or something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the other number one picks were probably... Rewalt was towards the top. Yeah, Nick Rewalt yeah. and uh, Brennan Goddard is a yeah, pretty Goddard good player as well. One, yeah. mm. There was someone else that I'd heard of on the list of most games from number ones and then a couple of older dudes. I didn't know who they were. Uh, yeah, it's hard to know off yeah. the top of my head without yeah, without yeah, I wasn't, seeing the list. But yeah. I wasn't demanding an elaboration. Don't worry. <laughs> cool. Wasn't so, putting that on you, Ricky Bobby. So we'll go on to Collingwood GWS, the first yeah. prelim final. The first note I have here is Toby Green is a dog. Hmm? Thoughts, impressions. Yeah, he's pretty consistently getting himself into some situations that he probably shouldn't be in necessarily. Yeah. Well, he's copped a week, and I think he's appealing it now. There's yeah. a chance he gets off here because, as, as Joyce said in the group chat, the AFL kind of slapped him with a week almost as an acknowledgement that last week they should have given him a, at least a week. Uh, um, and this week his, his behaviour wasn't as bad. But I guess because he's done it two weeks in a row, uh, then he, I feel like he deserves a week on merit. But I guess if you look at each case individually, which is probably what you have to do. Yeah, you can't then take... I think there's a good chance he gets off here, even though I think he's a dirty little dog. Yeah. <laughs> Great he's, player. He's probably barely going to make a cent in game fees by the time this finals are done <laughs> at this rate. <laughs> True, yeah. Well, seven and a half grand, yeah, that would be yeah. most of his game fees, surely. I don't even know how much that, that would yeah. make. Yeah, I don't know. be a solid chunk after, oh, after yeah. his after tax earnings. It'd be a solid chunk on that. Seven and a half grand is a lot of money, Play even off. for a player like Toby Green. Um, but... That could be a huge blow because the Giants midfield really... He was probably best on ground. I think you and I both voted him yeah. best on ground. Um, Kelly and Hopper were really good as well. If he misses, that's a huge blow, Green, because they're already yeah. underdogs against the Pies. There is a chance... I don't know what the status is on Cornelio. Yeah, I was going to ask what's Cornelio's deal at this point. Yeah, I need to I need to have a look at the injury list. Probably yeah. should have done that before I started this podcast. But um, I thought he was due to play next... Uh, sorry, last week. Yeah. Obviously didn't make it. He must be close. Yeah, you'd think. So um, if he replaces Green, that's not as big a blow. Mind you, Green has had really good second half of the year. And is confident and got his momentum. Cornelio's got to re-pick his up after mm. going down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's going to be some fitness right. considerations there. Um, Collingwood at the MCG is a tough ask for any team. How likely do you think the Giants are of causing an upset here? I think they're capable. They've not... They knocked off Geelong earlier in the year down in Geelong. Mm-hmm. I That's think true. they're very capable. Myself. It is, yeah. Green goes a long way in helping them, but yeah. even without him, I think it's possible, but just a lot less likely. The Pies will be without um, Degoe. Yeah. That's his name. Jordan Degoe will miss, obviously. He's uh, he's still in... Oh, he's probably back from I Germany I think he's now. back, yeah. yeah. Um, I hope he comes back, because I'm on the Pies bandwagon now. I really want them to uh, to do well. Um who does DeBoer go to? Which Collingwood midfielder? Ooh, I'd go side bottom myself. I wrote down the same name. Yeah, yeah side bottom. Because I, like, Trelaw and stuff get plenty, Trelaw and Adams get plenty of it, obviously, but mm. side bottom use class, you yeah. know. Yeah, totally agree with you. Him there. or Pendles, even. Pendles is one when he, you don't want him mm. accumulating a lot of it. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, they can always switch, like, Adams in the second half if he has a big first half, yeah. as he can do. That Collingwood midfield is so multi dimensional. Yeah. I think Darcy Moore wouldn't have played last time they played UWS, right? Can't I'm recall. putting you on the spot yeah, there because so it's a tough question. Specifically, but yeah. he's been in and out a lot. The so. Giants flogged him, um, but Moore would probably be the matchup for Cameron, I'm thinking, for this game. Yeah. Who do you want to win? I'd probably go on GWS myself, I think. Interesting. I'd kind of like to see him just get it done. Yeah. Even though there's, there is a. Part of me that doesn't want them to win a flag because as a Freo guy, it'd be oh, pretty yeah. embarrassing to see another team come in and win one before we have. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. From that perspective, but I'd probably still be like happy for them and whatnot, obviously. 
I tell you what, I like GWS and I want them to succeed. Probably not at the expense of Collingwood, but I'll tell you why I don't want them to win this game, and that's because I don't think they're capable of beating Richmond on grand final day. And mm. I think, and I know people said this about the Eagles last year and were wrong, I think GWS Richmond would be a shit grand final. Mm. I think Richmond would kill them. Collingwood, J- Richmond's obviously the better grand final. That's product, what I'm hoping I'd say. for. I'm, ho- I'm thinking, in my opinion, Collingwood are the most capable team of knocking off Richmond mm. on grand final day. Assuming oh, Geelong's got to play yeah. in the prelim, so... yeah. Yeah, that's just my view. Um, but who will win? Who's your tip? Brain saying Collingwood, but I'm probably go heart saying G Dubs. I've got, I've just got a feeling. I think G Dubs can get it done. So that's your, you're nominating GWS. I'll go them. There's the Ruffy. Why not? What's the margin? Another three pointer. Ooh, man, I would, I would enjoy it. Even though I would, yeah, for those reasons I just said, I would be disappointed. Yeah. I'm gonna say Pies by seven. I'm still. The, my heart says Richmond's going to win. Sorry, my head is saying Richmond's going to win the flag, but something mm. just, I can't shake. I feel like Collingwood's going to win. Mm. Anyway, move on to the second preliminary final. And this uh, this should be a fairly good game. I'm really hoping Geelong brings their best game because if they do... They're, they could either show up or mm. they can shit the bed, Geelong. In yeah. This one that's going one or two ways. The only time they've played this year, I believe, Geelong won by 67 points. That is significant. I'm guessing that's when Richmond was decimated health-wise, though, to be fair. Yes, Richmond went through a real lean trot in the middle of the year with injuries. I think they got belted by Adelaide and I think North Melbourne around that time as well. Uh So such was their form. So, yeah, they were at their lowest ebb. But in my opinion, I feel like Richmond are primed and they're not going to allow a repeat of last year. Uh Of course, last year they won 18 games. They convincingly beat Hawthorne. Well, comfortably beat Hawthorne in week one of the finals, got the bye. Everyone thought a Richmond West Coast Grand Final was on the cards and Collingwood smoked them. And I think that really, really hurt Richmond. It yeah. goes without saying, I, I know Hardwick was gutted. Um, so, so many of their players would have been as well. Um, and I think, if, I was thinking, if Richmond win this year as well, 2018 will be looked at as the year that got away for them. Because uh-huh. there'll be this one year in the middle where they choked at a prelim. But anyway, um, Tom Hawkins suspension. How significant is that? That's Pretty big for Geelong, I feel like, because Radagalia is getting there as a key forward target, but he's not on Tom Hawkins' level. Tom I Hawkins is a real big target for him. That he's someone they can look for whenever they're in trouble, kick in his direction, and he can at the very least make a contest, How which stupid. is invaluable. True. How stupid was he to do that? <sighs> bit daft. What an idiot. Least. It was about 50 metres off the ball. Uh, he's bit playing daft, in a semi-final with a potential grand final slash prelim on the line, uh, and he whacks Will Scofer for no reason. Not his finest I be, moment. I would be fuming if Josh Kennedy had done that. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, I agree with you. Tom Hawkins is hugely important for them. Asava Raglia, I love as a prospect. He's he's played really well against the Eagles, yeah. and he's he is a decent player already. As the one man up forward, I yeah. am skeptical that he'll be able to have the same impact. Yeah, you need Hawkins taking that top guy, meaning they can't double team you, that sort of stuff. Exactly. I think Geelong have the defence to be able to withstand Rewalt and Lynch, but it's going to yeah, be a tough midfield battle as well. Blitzar's back. Is he down back, do you think? Good or question. They, Good yeah. question. Um, probably. Yeah, you'd want him down back, I think. Yes. Because he's got the size to handle a Lynch or a Rewalt, and yes. Stewart can't do it alone sort of thing. Yeah. And Harry Taylor. Um, I think... I'd, yeah, so I think the midfield battle is going to be tight. Richmond have a great midfield, but as do Geelong, obviously. The back line is sound, but the, I just don't know where the goals are going to come from from the gap. Yeah, um, yeah if Hawkins is suspended for the game, which he probably... Danger's going to have to bob yeah. up and kick four or five, mm. which is obviously... That's very possible. Off. Yeah. Um, Cats have now played two at the row at the G, so they're a bit more familiarised than they otherwise would have been if this had been you know, the first week yeah. of the finals. Dusty versus Danger head-to-head. That is... This is an amazing chance to see two absolute champions of the game go do battle in a prelim final. Uh-huh. And we forget maybe, well, I forget, that Danger hasn't won a flag. Uh-huh. So for all his accolades, he's never been in a, in a team that's won the flag. So I, And he's, what, 30 years old? He wa- he'd won it. Oh, he's going to want it bad. Uh-huh. So I feel like he's going to have a massive game. I even noticed that a bit to go back to the Eagles game quickly with Gaff because mm-hmm. he, I felt like he stood up because he missed out on last year, obviously, and mm-hmm. he would have been gunning hard and you could see that. True. I'll give him credit where credit's due there. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Two goals, yeah. 30 possessions for old yeah. Gaff. That was a great effort. 
Um, but to finish up on the Richmond Geelong game, who do you want to win first? Want I'd probably say Geelong. I've always never minded Geelong. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I would like to see a different premier as well to mm. Richmond. Uh, I, I, I guess. Yes, some, Richmond, some players of theirs do annoy me, particular Rance and Tom Lynch. Um, I like Hardwick, Cochin, and I even mm. like Jack Rewell. But I guess I dislike them because I respect them as probably the best team in the competition. Mm. And I like to see a bit of a mix-up. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't want to see Richmond just win the flag. I feel like it's boring. I saw it two years ago. <sighs> so two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's where I'm at. But... Yeah. Brain-wise, I'd probably say Richmond wins it, though. Yeah, what's, brain. what's your tip? Richmond, couple of goals. I'm going to say Richmond by 24 points. Ooh, yeah. Doubled yeah. me up there. <laughs> Just had to up. up uh, Is that the first tip all finals we've agreed on? Second. West Se- Coast Essendon yes, yes, was the other yeah, one. Yeah. 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 yeah other yeah. than that. That's funny. <laughs> and we're, we're even as well. <laughs> this, will, this will decide it. This will make yeah. or break it. And then, obviously, the grand final. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, to finish up the podcast, got about a minute and a half left on the camera. What I will do is just quickly run through our True Footy Player of the Finals Award because we finally yeah. caught up all the votes. Um, Steel Sidebottom is currently first place because uh, he scored a perfect 15 in week one. Shuey, 14. Martin, 14. Whitfield, 14. Selwood, 14. is the, uh, the rest of the top five. So we will keep updating that on the podcast and in our social media. I'm also going to be doing a My Brownlow Count video. I'm hoping it's up tonight or tomorrow, guys. So... Fingers crossed. But um, otherwise, Busher, it's been a pleasure having you here again at Absolutely. your house. Absolutely. It's been great being here. <laughs> yep, that's it. Um, looking forward to two massive prelim finals, and hopefully we might be able to live stream one or two and see how we go yeah. later this week. We'll put it up on social media as well. But for now, farewell. Farewell. Cheers. <laughs>